بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه. Uh, today's story actually happened while we were making tawaf, circling the Kaaba. And it's very crowded, as you know and you see in the pictures, or for those of you that have been there. And I was walking actually with some of the members that were in our Umrah group, uh, families and, you know, single uh, young men. As we were walking, all of a sudden, everyone around us slowed down to an extremely slow walk. And then I saw people parting around what seemed to be an obstacle. I thought someone had dropped something. But it turned out there was actually a man walking at the pace of a snail, right in the midst of this crowd. It wasn't too close to the Kaaba, but it was still amidst a crowded area, sort of between the Kaaba and the, that outer uh, courtyard. I'll be honest with you, my mind jumped to the worst assumption in the beginning. I was like, what is this man doing and, and, and creating all of this commotion and hardship by walking so slowly? But then we passed him. One of the mothers that was with us told me, go back and look after that man, see what he needs. And so I separated from the group, slowed down and uh, my pace so that I could, uh, you know, see him. And as I turned my head slowly to look at him, I looked into his face and I was absolutely shocked. He was blind. And you know there are people that are blind and their, their eyeballs are still intact, but his eyes were physically not there. And so the greatest degree of blindness, there is no way he could see anything whatsoever. And I was even more surprised, uh, as you know, you know, Many people that are blind, they have, they'll have a, a stick in front of them that they use to see where they're going and define the perimeter. But this man also looked older than time itself, and so he needed a cane to support himself. And I was shocked this man was doing both functions with a single cane, which is very difficult, because it means as he leans, he leans on opposite sides of his body with every step. As I saw the men laboring like this, the first thing I felt was an extreme disappointment in myself for assuming the worst out of what is turned out to be, you know, such a difficult situation. I, I jumped to the conclusion that this person was being careless. But then I also wanted to help. And so I reached out my hand and grabbed his hand and I intended to take him around the Kaaba and help him complete his rituals and, and see after his needs. But then, as I looked into his face, he smiled, he shook his head, and he took his hand out of mine. And he continued to lean on his cane and make a tawaf. The people in our group actually were, were very shocked. One of the young brothers said, how does he know when he gets to the black stone? He, he can't see it. But what I saw in that smile was a reliance on a guidance much greater than the guidance that I could give him and a conviction that he would find his way without my help. Don't understand me incorrectly. It's perfectly reasonable and, and understandable that a person with such a physical handicap would get help. There's no harm and no shyness in this whatsoever. But this man shook me because of his conviction in Allah. He reminded me of a verse, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Those that struggle for our sake, meaning God's sake, we shall surely guide them to our paths. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ and Allah is with those that excel and do good. This man seemed like a, a physical embodiment of this verse. A deep conviction that Allah would guide his path around the Kaaba and guide his path in life. And here I have to remind myself and, and remind many of us that have been privileged and, and blessed with a lot of blessings from Allah, be those blessings in family, or health, or education, or uh, material means, or uh, you know, friends, and, and, and the list we, we could never enumerate Allah's blessings on us. We know that Allah tests 
with constriction and he tests with ease. And sometimes the test of plenty can be more difficult than the test of poverty. But what I see as I, as I travel campuses and meet young people, I see that a lot of us have a lack of conviction in Allah and have this desire to, we start obsessing about every minor detail and every small piece of life. And if the smallest thing goes wrong, we can make a mountain out of a molehill. Every time, you know, you get something in school that you weren't expecting or a friend says something that, that just totally catches you off guard or you have a problem with our family. Life is full of problems. Every time life throws you a curveball, try to think of this blind man. Try to think of that, that conviction and that trust and that confidence in a power that is greater than your power and a plan that is higher and better than your plan and a certainty that, that can only be gotten by trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trusting in a power that is greater than you. Uh, I hope inshallah that this man serves as a reminder for us to this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those that place their full reliance on Him and their trust in Him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all guidance to His paths and the best of this life and hereafter. Allahumma ameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.